Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. It's Tuesday, I'm in my shed. I try and do two or three days in my shed each week, remembering that we run the shop and we work weekends. Uh, we need to get something else out of the emergency storage shed. I've made a promise and I'm going to do something every week and it seems like you guys are going to make me stick to it. Um, I've got, there's a, whole, a Honda generator on the bench which will be a project shortly. We have to inspect and service and or repair that. Uh, I've got, I've started about four or five videos. Uh, I've got more on the go. There's projects happening left, right and centre. Um, let's go and get something out of that shed. I've got to get that done this week. Oh, and also we're off to the farm next week for another trip over there for the great farm cleanup. Uh, the auction's finished this Thursday in a couple of days, so I'll be filming that. There is literally stuff going on everywhere I turn. Um, and I also, I'm just uploading a bottles video, which I did at the shop yesterday. And I do want to get something else out of the carport this week as well. So there's nothing like loading myself up. A, uh, a great uncle of mine once said, the secret to success is to bite off more than you can chew and chew like crazy. So uh, we're doing a bit of that. Should I get that big thing off the top there? I don't know what to do with it. I guess I should make a decision and I guess I should get it down before it falls on me. Uh, all right, there's not a lot of room on the workbench, but we'll carry that through and we'll have a look at it and see what we're going to do with it. Okay, let's see if we can get this down. I think it's a part of an old fuse box or um, generator, home generator power board. It came from a farm clearing sale years ago and it sat in the backyard at the shop for years. All right, let's get that on the bench and see what we're going to do with it and work out what it actually is. Okay, it's um, it looks like it's on a bit of old board, and I think I know what this is. I suspect that this is an early uh, home generator selenium rectifier. At least that's what it looks like. Um, there's a gauge there, an am ammeter gauge. It says charge, discharge up to 20 amps. The housing looks to be either cast iron or cast aluminium. Let's check that. It'll be cast aluminium. Oh, look at that. We made the meter move with our magnetic force. Well, that's a good sign. Suggesting that the meter's probably okay. Uh, so cast aluminium, a whole heap of plates... Uh, there are electrical connections, so I'm pretty sure that is a large selenium rectifier, which is uh, basically or like a mechanical way, sort of mechanical, not really, I guess, but it's a it's a conversion mechanism from AC to DC voltage using plates which are coated in selenium oxide or something. I'm not sure of the chemistry, but essentially one plate is equivalent to one diode and they must be coupled up somehow. Uh, and you basically have AC in, which possibly would have been from a farm generator. There's some wiring here. And possibly then it produced DC voltage for running lights in the farmhouse. I'm not too sure. So what are we going to do with it? Well, let's take it off the board for a start because that'll reduce its, uh, its footprint in my shed by quite a bit. The board is just a piece of old masonite here with um, just thin pieces of hardwood on the back um, and all we're going to do with that is break it up for use in our fire for the upcoming winter. Okay it looks like there's only four screws holding into the timber however the bottom one's underneath this box it's a, just a junction box so we're going to have to undo that. The first screwdriver I grabbed is an old ratchet screwdriver which is pretty cool in itself actually. How many of you have used a ratchet screwdriver? where you can go wrong way. And let's get this junction box off. Hopefully the screws undo. I think they're brass screws, so that helps. Yep. Okay, any spiders? No, but we can see where they've been. Alright, let's undo some of these connections. At least with brass hardware, it doesn't corrode badly. When you have uh, steel through cast aluminium, 
you get some really bad corrosion quite often you never even get them apart okay we hopefully can get these other screws out now and one more and that should lift off the board oh look at that and that's something you do need to be aware of with old fuse boxes and things asbestos material uh, it's not going to be dangerous really unless we start cutting drilling or filing it if we leave it intact and maybe spray some clear lacquer over it it's going to be perfectly safe it's only the dust that's the the big problem okay let's get this old piece of timber out of the road but first let's save our bits of copper wire And that can go to the firewood pile so guys i've made a decision i've just been checking ebay uh, there are plenty of old vintage selenium rectifiers on there all sorts some are automotive some are uh, for motorcycles some are for old vintage radio equipment uh, mostly they're just curios um, you know they're not really worthwhile getting back into operational condition because they're not as efficient as the modern um, silicon rectifier bridges and this one's quite pitted into the aluminium so the selenium oxide or whatever it is the coating's not going to, going to be no good anyway so it's pointless trying to get the thing back together uh, you know back operational part of me wants to pull it apart clean it up and repaint it and polish all the you know the nickel plated bit there and polish the brass bits but it's really only just for a decorative piece anyway so what i'm going to do i'm just going to wash it up uh, give it a good wash I'm going to basically I might take the ammeter out just so no water gets in that uh, I think that's easy to remove and I'll just going to dunk the rest in some warm soapy water give it a good wash up as I said with the asbestos it's no issue unless you start cutting it or filing it especially wet you know we're not going to have any dust so that's fine a little bit of fine steel wool might just clean up a little bit of the brass and then I'm going to leave it dry give it a uh, I'm not even going to worry too much about the rust on this bolt I think I'll just give it a bit of a scrub with steel wool clean it up a little bit and then I'm going to put the ammeter back in and spray the whole thing with uh, just a clear lacquer and it's going to be a nice piece of vintage electrical um, history basically I think it would come under the umbrella of steampunk it just looks really cool screwed to the wall and I'm going to sell it. I don't have any spare wall space here and I don't really have a desire to keep it. So I reckon with a little bit of a clean up, it will come up to quite a nice saleable piece. And we could, I don't know what we could ask. Let's wait and see how it cleans up. All right, let's get this ammeter out of here first. I think we wouldn't want to get water into that because what will happen, we won't be able to dry it out and it'll forever go foggy behind the glass and it just won't look as good and eventually things will rust in there. So I think we can take that out and um, just clean that up a bit more carefully and the rest of it can be dunked in water. Um, the only other option, well, I mean, a low value option would be to scrap the thing. We have cast aluminium, we have a bit of copper, but um, the value would be so low, it'd be probably less than a dollar. And I reckon I'm, you know, should be able to get at least $30 for it as a nice cool piece of steampunk. Now, how does this bracket come out? There we go. There's big fibre washers on here. They kind of unscrew. That must be a tight fit. Oops, the bracket. And there's our ammeter. I would probably get $5 for the ammeter anyway, but we'll just clean up the surround and we'll clean up the rest of it. Put it all back together and we'll have a look at it. Okay, let's give this a really good clean up. And I think it's going to look great. A little bit of the green paint's coming off, unfortunately. But a clear lacquer will seal any loose stuff down and it'll give it a nice um, sort of a shabby look. I like the original paint. It just, the faded look, you can't reproduce with new paint. It just doesn't look the same. That's going to look great. All the pieces have dried now. As you can see, the ammeter 
looks nice with a little bit of polish to the nickel plated bezel. I've even polished up the little uh, brass connectors, being very careful not to touch the asbestos with uh, the wire wheel, just really touch the top of them. Uh, the only trouble is I've just noticed that this cover kind of hides them anyway, so it's really a bit pointless polishing those up. But we will see the brass labels there, which I didn't use the wire wheel on. I just used a bit of uh, fine steel wool while I was washing it, and that looks good. Battery, load, and gen, which would be generator. So now I'm just going to give it a quick spray with a clear lacquer, just to kind of seal it all. It'll hold any remaining flaky paint on, although the paint's pretty good now. It'll give a little bit of a gloss to the finish here. I did just buff the rust off that bolt at the top there. And then once we're finished giving that a spray and it's dried, we'll also actually spray the back just to make sure that uh, the asbestos is well and truly sealed. Then we can put the gauge back in. Okay, I've sprayed this whole unit with uh, a good uh, quality clear lacquer. In fact, I've given it quite a few coats and it's looking pretty good. How nice is that brass on the black look? So uh, anyway, it's all nicely coated. I've given it, as I said, a few coats. We just need to reassemble it and put, yeah, put the uh, ammeter back in and then we'll try and work out what we reckon we can get for it. I'm just about to install the ammeter and I just noticed some writing here in pencil and I'm pretty sure that's a date. Looks to be 29th of the 9th, 1948 or 46. Anyway, 1940s, I reckon. That's cool. That would have been the installation date, I guess. And there we have our 1940s uh, home generator selenium rectifier. What a great piece of kit. Hey, they made things they made things really cool back then, didn't they? Now, it kind of looks restored. We haven't really restored it. All we've done is clean it up and given it a bit of clear lacquer. But I find that's a great way of presenting things. You retain all the history. If you strip it back and repaint it, it kind of has lost something, I think. So it's a nice, uh, I guess you'd call it a sympathetic restoration. Um, it could be restored to operational condition if someone wants to. We haven't done any irreversible uh, processes to it. So uh, I would imagine you'd have to do something with the plates if you were going to reuse it as a, as a rectifier. But I like all the brass polished up there. You can't see it very well here. Uh, I like the effect of the original paint just with clear lacquer over it. I even polished the little brass screws here. So that looks pretty cool. Not a lot of work. And it's so much better than scrap metal. And I'm I'm thinking I'll put $50 on that in the shop. And if I had a nice bit of oak timber to screw it to, I probably would. But that, that then becomes another job. So we'll call this one finished. I get it out of my shed. I can put it in the shop when we're there next. And I'm going to put $50 on it. Little bit of a bonus. We've got some copper wire to go in our insulated copper wire bin. And we also got a bit of firewood kindling. So guys, uh, by my calculations, this video is probably just over 10 minutes long. Do we have enough time to get something else out of the shed? I have been told that I can't carry over any credits to the next week, but there might be something else we can get out of here quickly. Let's have a quick look. Okay, probably the next thing that's likely to fall on my head is this tub here. Uh, and I think there's actually some old saucepan lids in there, so they should be pretty quick to deal with. We, we won't do them this time. We'll have a look at what's in this bucket. And that appears to be an old washing machine timer. And it looks like we just have some random electrical bits. Let's just tip this out on the bench and go through it now. Okay, hopefully we're not opening a can of worms here. Um, that washing machine timer... I used to repair washing machines once upon a time. It's uh, it's off a pretty old Simpson, I'd suggest. Unlikely to ever be used. There is an electric motor on there I might take off. They do have uh, silver contacts in them, but I'm not going to pull that apart just to save the contacts. I think I might just, just break that electric motor off and the rest of it can go in the shred. Uh, we have, oh, okay, a new Clipsal uh, plug, replaceable plug. I'll probably put that in. I've got a box of electrical fittings. I'm likely to need that one day. This is actually, this is a, a guide. I don't know what the proper name for it is, but for the oxyacetylene cutting torch, 
this is where you'd put the nozzle in, clamp it up, and it should have an it should have had a second wheel there so that you could run it along and cut long straight cuts. I don't have an oxyacetylene set anymore, I used to, and I don't think that's really going to be much value. I think I'll just pull pull the brass out. Most of it's brass, so I'll just take that apart for the brass. And we have a few random electrical fittings. Uh, the Bakelite plugs I do save because I can sell them. I've mentioned that before. Uh, and there's a lot of... Oh, yeah. Okay. A lot of random plugs. That's a light fitting. It looks like it's cracked. I do have a box in the shed for assorted Bakelite electricals. Uh, I'm just going to tip this whole bucket into that box for now. And it will get rid of it for the moment. And we've just got these two items for scrap. So let's deal with that now. Electrical stuff just in there for now. We'll get to that another day. Okay, I've just snipped the wires on this motor and it should just come out from the timer. So they can just go in with our electric motors. They can go in with our shred. Or it could go to the e-waste uh, bins at the transfer station because it is electrical. No real value to me. Uh, the other little thing here I took apart. So that's brass. Uh, the little adjusting wheel here is just heavy melt steel. I don't think I'd ever use for that. No, no, don't be tempted. That's a specialised bolt that I'd probably never use, so that can go with the heavy melt steel. I will keep these small bolts. They're a nice fine thread and a brass nut. I have containers for those. So let's allocate that stuff. The old bolts there in that container. I need a new bucket for my electric motors, but I'm making a little pile there. I'll get the bucket out shortly. Nice piece of clean brass goes in here. I know I wasn't going to be saving steel anymore, but I can't bring myself to throw the heavy stuff out to the transfer station. I have a bucket here of e-waste that I will take to the transfer station. And I don't want to save random buckets for the shed. So this one is going in the recycle bin. So guys, mission successful for another week. We've got something to sell in the shop. Uh, something less in my emergency story shed with a bit of a bonus. Don't expect bonuses every week, but we'll see how we go. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Another one ticked off. We'll see you soon. Bye for now.